Good morning and welcome to Tuesday the 21st of September 2021 to join with me for the Office of Morning Prayer. Today is St Matthew's Day and both the psalm and the uh, scripture reading uh, reflect uh, about that. Our psalm this morning is number 49 and our reading is from Paul's second letter to Timothy uh, chapter 2, uh, just a couple of verses from there. But both these readings, as always, will appear as screen share through the course of this recording. So let's turn to morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of all, to be glory and praise forever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, and in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Our psalm is number 49, and you may join with me either by saying the response every so often, or by saying the second half of each verse, or indeed joining with me for the whole of the psalm uh, together. Psalm 49, the response, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Oops. I'm sorry, I uh, get it back to the beginning there. Here we go. Hear this, all you peoples. Listen, all you that dwell in the world. You of low or high degree, both rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak of wisdom, and my heart shall medit meditate on your understanding. I will incline my ear to a parable. I will unfold my riddle with a lyre. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Why should I fear in evil days, when the malice of my foes surrounds me, such as trust in their goods, and glory in the abundance of their riches, when no one can indeed ransom another, or pay to God the price of deliverance? The ransom a soul is too costly. There is no price one could pay for it, so that they might live forever, and never see the grave. For we see that the wise die also, with the foolish and the ignorant they perish, and leave their riches to others. Their tomb is their home forever, their dwelling to all generations. Though they call their lands after their own names, those who have honour but lack understanding, are like the beasts that perish. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Such is the way of those who boast in themselves, the end of those who delight in their own world. Like a flock of sheep, they are destined to die. Death is their shepherd. They go down straight to the pit. Their beauty shall waste away. And the land of the dead shall be their dwelling. But God shall ransom my soul. From the grasp of death will he take me. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Be not afraid if some grow rich, and the glory of their house increases. For they will carry nothing away when they die, nor will their glory follow after them, though they count themselves happy while they live, and praise you for your success. They shall enter the company of their ancestors, who will never more see the light. Those who have honour but lack understanding are like the beasts that perish. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. And a prayer. Save us from envy, God our Redeemer, and deliver us from the chains of wealth, that, ransomed through your Son, we may inherit the crown of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And our reading from the second letter of Timothy, chapter 3, verses 14 to 17. St Paul writes, But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, 
and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I said at the beginning, today is St Matthew's Day, and uh, when we think of St Matthew, we probably think of the first gospel in the New Testament that bears his name. Uh, there's a bit of scholarly debate as to whether it is the same Matthew or perhaps a disciple of the Apostle Matthew who um, put the, the, um, that, that gospel together uh, and has given us the gospel that we have today in our New Testament and Bibles. But within that reading there, we had that uh, quotation of how all scripture is inspired by God and how it is in there uh, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, uh, to help us in our journey in faith. And of course, none other than the Bible itself that we can, that, that helps us in this journey. And it reminds us that the scripture uh, touches every aspect of our human life. Everything that, that is there, the Bible contains everything about us in our human existence, uh, from the lives that we live and all the influences that we encounter and all the experiences and situations that we'll ever encounter in life, all the emotional ups and downs, all the um, conflicts that we experience and the challenges that we experience. And they're all immersed, they've all been written by uh, authors who've been engaged in human life and authors who have dwelt and reflected and thought on the ways and wills of God. In particular, of course, in the New Testament, we have the writers of Matthew who've reflected uh, about the works and the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. So today reminds us of the place of scripture in our lives. It's there as a life manual. I always say to people uh, when they um, have the Bible, uh, not to necessarily treat it like an ordinary book or a novel, reading from cover to cover, because if you do so, you'll, be, you'll very quickly get totally confused. Rather, treat it as a life manual. I have a manual online for my car, um, good old Hayes, is it Hayes manuals, uh, which really pulls a car to pieces. Uh, to help you understand what's gone wrong and how to mend it, etc. And I want to suggest that the scriptures uh, can be very much uh, thought of in that same way. They are a life manual that we can dip into uh, and explore, reflect on, and think on and pray on uh, as we meet particular challenges in life. So I pray that today and every day um, the scriptures will inspire you, uh, even just a short word of the scripture uh, such as we've had today, to inspire you and to uh, empower you and enable you on your journey in faith. Thanks be to God for the scriptures and for Matthew that uh, he has given us with a rich legacy. Thanks be to God. We move on now to the words of the Benedictus. We pray to get, say together, blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He's raised up for us a mighty saviour born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins and the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. And so let's move into a time of prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise that you've brought us into this new day. We pray, Father, for those around us who will not have a good day ahead. We think of the many people suffering around the world, 
people whose lives are blighted by war, by strife, by so much uncertainty and so much sudden change. We continue to remember before you, dear Lord, the peoples of Afghanistan and those who are made refugee, particularly in our own country. We may find peace and stability once again and the, and the facility to start to rebuild their lives um, in better situations and circumstances. We also share with them for those who are still left in that country and facing so much uncertainty. And Father God, we pray alongside them for all who work for peace and reconciliation, seeking to bring, um, yeah, simply that peace and reconciliation uh, between peoples in the lands and of neighboring states. Give them good inspiration and encouragement, dear Lord, for this and every day in their discussions and their uh, deliberations, in their debates. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for our own country. We pray for those who govern us and ask God's blessing on them. Almighty God, we pray for our Queen and members of the royal family and for her government, our Prime Minister and uh, Ministers of the Crown who make up the uh, cabinets. But especially, Lord, for those who have taken on new responsibilities uh, this past week. We pray, Lord, for all who govern our lands, that you'll give them guidance and wisdom. And they may be ready always to respond, reflecting on your ways of respect and dignity and value for all human life, value for all creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We bring before your mighty God those who are sick and suffering. Once again, those who will not have a good day ahead. Those who are housebound, those who are awaiting results. Lord, be with them this day. May they know your presence is there, that you, Lord Jesus, are with us in our whole our human life, and you are with us there at the beginning and at the end. So, Lord, may that assurance of your everlasting presence be with those for whom we pray for now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We give thanks for the life and witness and, love and example and legacy of Saint Matthew. So let us hear now the words of the collect for today. We pray, oh, my, Almighty God, whose blessed son called Matthew the tax collector to be an apostle and evangelist. Give us grace to forsake the selfish pursuit of gain and the possessive love of riches, that we may follow in the way of your son, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join together all our thoughts and prayers as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And so to the closing words. The Lord bless us and preserve us and keep us from all evil. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. And I pray that you will have a good day ahead and I look forward to being with you this time next week. Every blessing now. Goodbye.